Welcome to our online worship on this very special Palm Sunday. My name is Pastor Heather Kistner, and joining with me today is Bev Bohack as our organist, and also we thank Bill um, Callender for doing our recording for our service. Today, as it is Palm Sunday, otherwise known as Passion Sunday, we encounter this paradox that defines our faith. Jesus Christ is glorified as king and also as a humiliated servant. We too are full of this paradox. Like Peter, we fervently desire to follow Christ, but find that we ourselves are afraid and we deny God. We wave palms in celebration today as Christ comes into our midst and we follow with trepidation as he follows his path to the death on the cross. Amid all that we are and all that we have, we are invited into this paradoxical promise of life through Christ's broken body and outpouring of love in a meal of bread and wine. Friends, we begin this week that stands at the center of our church year, anticipating the completion of God's astounding work. And so we hear in song, all glory, laud, and honor. It's in our Cranberry Hymnal 344. Our readings for this morning are from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 through 9a. And it is the story of the servant of the Lord submitting to suffering. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 31, 9 through 16. And in verse 31, verse 5, it says, Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Our second reading for Psalm for Palm Sunday is Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. And the theme is being humble to the point of death on a cross. And our gospel reading for this Palm Sunday is Matthew, the 26th chapter, beginning with verse 14 through Matthew, the 27th chapter, to verse 66. I encourage families to find their Bibles and to read this in your home. These scripture passages will also be put on the website for your reviewing. This is the story of the passion of our Lord. After hearing these texts and looking at this scripture, we often ask ourselves the question, why does Jesus have to die? And we personalize it and we ask, why do some of our own members like Larry continue to suffer year after year with the same disease? And why do our friends like Ken and Betty seem to pass from one trial to another? And why does Glenn 
from happy days who walks these halls have to go through the loss of mind when his body is good. And why can't we worship in person anymore? Why did this COVID-19, this coronavirus, have to happen and spread? We can go on. We can name others from our Trinity congregation who struggle with the very question, why does suffering happen to God's people? And we might ask those, and they're real questions. And we might even go further by saying, if God is all powerful, if God is all good, why doesn't he stop the suffering? Why doesn't he intervene and save us from the pain and humiliation and fear for tomorrow? But it leads us to a deeper question. Why doesn't an all-powerful, all-loving God devise another way for salvation other than the torturous death of his own son, Jesus? But friends, we need to remember that it was Jesus who himself prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Why the suffering then? When we think about this, and when we know that God is all loving, and we believe that God is all powerful, yet too often we also stop at those two traits of our sovereign God. We neglect the third important characteristic within God's nature. The clothed in sin, we put aside the fact that God is also all holy. There's nothing that can limit God in any way. And so we want to believe that God's acts according to the fullness of his entire nature. And when God didn't provide an alternative for the cross for Jesus, it wasn't because he lacked the power or didn't love his son. No, God has all the power. There was no outside force forcing God's hand. No, God the Father, by his all-powerful, all-unconditionally loving and completely holy nature, sent Jesus to the cross for us, for our suffering. And Jesus consented to his loving Father's will. Jesus trusted that whatever lay ahead of him was in ultimately his Father's hand, his unreserved, untainted holiness. And right now, these words are also offered for you and for me. In these hours when we wonder about all of the pain and the suffering and the tragedies and the brokenness and the tears and why death has to come, because we know that they do. We can say the same words of Jesus, our loving Savior. Into your hands, O oh God, I commit my spirit. So to the faithful that are hearing this message today, we need to hear this important word. That the story of Jesus' passion is not one of despair, but really a beacon of hope. A word of truth. It is the gospel of ultimate love. Because it's true, we live in a broken and a suffering world where sin brought Jesus to the cross. And that ultimately, our Heavenly Father God is in control. That your situation and my situation, no matter how bad they are or how much we worry, 
they are held safely in the palm of our loving God's hand. And we're simply invited to trust, to receive that gift, and to know that Easter morn is just around the corner. Amen. Turning our hearts to God who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of God's care. God of mercy, awaken your church to new proclamations of your faithfulness. By your spirit, give us bold and joyful words to speak that we sustain the weary with the message of your redemption, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, quiet the earth where it trembles and shakes. Prosper the work of scientists, engineers, and researchers, and all medical personnel as we wait in this time for peaceful change. Find a way to restore creation to health and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, drive away fear and anger that cause us to turn against one another. Give courage and wisdom to our leaders. In all things, show us the ways that you call us to die to self, to live for you, and give of ourselves for the sake of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, Send your saving help to all who suffer abuse, insult, discrimination, or contempt. Heal the wounded. Comfort the dying. Bring peace to those suffering chronic or terminal illness. Tend to all who cry out for relief in mind, body, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, when we breathe our last, you raise us to eternal life. With your witness in heaven and on earth, let us boldly confess the name of Jesus Christ with resurrection and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, hear these prayers and all the prayers as we commend them to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Our closing piece of music is Go to Dark Gethsemane. It's in your Cranberry Hymnal 347. <laughs> 